automatically? Well, yeah, I do have no. I, well, it automatically establishes the uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, connection, but I still have to authenticate to the network. Yeah, first of all, you right. should be registered. Yeah. You should, uh, should have yeah. a score. Right. right. So yeah, I still, still, no, no, I still have to authenticate. Yeah. It establishes the connection. I get a deep. I get. This was one of these. No, no, no. I get. Uh, I get uh, the DNS and the IP address and all that stuff automatically, but I still have to authenticate. You still have to authenticate to the fact. What's the question? To, to be able to do it. In other words, uh, you register it until what's that? You register this device. What do you want to do with it? Because like, you, you want to use it as a microphone? Because of security. Yeah. Issues. Okay. So th this is not a microphone. Uh, this is just a headset oh, uh, to record something. Yeah, yeah, but but it's correct. It's just stuck uh, there. No, but Each what he wants is a microphone to project your voice, correct? Yes. Yeah. That's yeah. totally different. Start. Yeah, that's a uh, that's okay. a microphone that I don't capture. That. I don't I don't have it. It doesn't. It's not amplified. This one's mine. She, she doesn't amplify. Yeah. Uh, talk to Rex, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's great to be. Oh, it was Thanks nice being here too, Cindy. Welcome to the Thanks. Be I'm sure pleasure. I'll be seeing you. Great. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Can I have an idea? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me just give me a few minutes here, and um, I'll just. I'll Sign is all over. Okay. Great. Hey, guys. Good job. Twenty minutes goes by. Or Thirty minutes goes by. I know, which is good. Yeah. Well, and people were interested too, so. Yeah. Rex, uh, Rex Schmidt, if you look him up on the directory, just email him. Next one is Stella, uh, so st to have her wired up first.
Priscilla, you want to log into your website? Yeah, we are actually on schedule. Yeah, we're fine. And then we need Eric there is to get in here and talk. It probably would have been good if you talked about it right after. Right after Jim? Jim, right after okay. Jim. But, you know, so we'll just, just, let's just take a few minutes. And then we'll go right to Eris, okay. I think. Don't you? Without a break. Just go right to Eris. Okay. You can do that. That's what I'm thinking. I mean, well, we're almost... I think we're okay, we're don't okay. you think? We're okay. challenges very quickly talk about how easy it is and then and then I'll play a one minute of the clip because that was very powerful I think. page that you see here is facultyweb.gc.edu. This was a page that we had for the last three, four years uh, as a way for faculty to create professional websites. Now, one of the reasons why faculty need a domain in cyberspace to build a profile for the website is for a lot of reasons. You might go to a conference and you might want to point people people to your website. You may have resources, publications, your achievements, awards, all that kind of stuff. So this, is a, this was the old way to do it, where you had to have Dreamweaver installed on your computer, or you had to have, have some kind of a web editor. You had to create your site. You had to know the software. That was a learning curve. Once you had the uh, crea file created, you had to use FTP to upload it to the server. You had to get FTP, password, and username. There was a lot of bottlenecks. That's the old way of doing websites. Nobody does websites like that anymore unless you really love HTML and you want to go deep into HTML, which is uh, you know, very hard to do. Again, it's, so the point was we were looking for a solution for our faculty to be able to quickly go in, point, click, and build a dynamic 
microsite of their own with their own domain name on it. And so we found a tool called Open Scholar. It's a tool that's built on open source uh, application called Drupal. And some guys at Harvard uh, customized the code, and they have released it for free. And we feel that this is the website, this is the tool that can help each and every, every um, faculty at GGC to create a site within minutes, basically. So um, as you can see, this is the main landing page. These are all profiles of people, and there are more profiles behind that. So it is point and click Web 2.0 technology. So the best way to see the features of this is to show you a very short video of that. And then if you have any questions, you want to have an account, and you want to create your own site, send me an email, and we'll make an account for you. And it's got directions on what to do. And here it is.
Determine the layout and structure of your site in the control panel by simply dragging and dropping widgets to various regions and sections in your site. These widgets not only add useful navigation, but provide your site with a dynamic, automated flow of new information. Even adding a new photo perfectly cropped is easy in the control panel. Now Stella will show how easy it was for her to create her site. I'm no expert on this. Can you hear? Is that it's on? I'm definitely not an expert on uh, the Scholar Web, but uh, what I did is just what Gotham told me to do. So I kind of went in. And of course, yes, but he's next door to me. That's the difference. She doesn't need I mean, it's wonderful. So, I, you know, I went in there and I told Gotham, I said, you know, I really need to, I'm going to a conference and I've got a lot of resources on hybrid courses and, and blended learning. And I don't, I don't want to take anything with me. I just want to be able to tell people at these presentations, you know, here's where you can go to see my material, even though a lot of my conferences are technology based and you can upload, but it's limited. So I just wanted to be able to do that. And so, you know, Gotham said, well, why don't you just put everything out there in, in you know, an open scholar? And so that's what I did. So once I started working on it, I was, it was just so easy to work with. And of course, Gotham is just for you guys, a telephone call away or an email call away. And, uh, and I, so I started using it for a lot of things. So Gotham, if you just click, um, just this main screen here is my bio. And on the side here are some upcoming events. So, you know, I was just kind of thinking, okay, I would just put some things in for you guys today. So with the tech fair, the schedule is in there. And notice I have the, some calendar events in there as well. So it very nicely shows this. So I can even send my students there if I desire. For instance, let's say that, let's go down to classes. If you go down to classes and click there, you'll see that I've actually put some things in for my class alerting students that this is a hybrid course and what that means, et cetera. So, you know, without them being logged in, uh, they haven't been uploaded as students. The class hasn't been opened yet. You could, if students ask you about your course, you could have it out there in that way. It's a public site. 
Uh, there are some things I've locked down, like the very first item on the left-hand side is the Master Teacher Program. I've locked that down because I'm working on it, and I don't want it open to everybody, so you can do that. Uh, and of course, let's go to presentations. You can see some presentations. Uh, you can see links. So click on links, and when I went to this conference, I said, everybody, here are some really good people that have done a lot with hybrid learning, or that the, um, that the journal articles were really outstanding. There it is. So you know, it's just a wonderful resource for me in that way. And you can put your publications in there, put a short bio in there like I did. Um, and then scroll down maybe and just show hybrid courses at GGC because we're having Christine Riley come in at the very end and just talk a little bit about our hybrid initiative. And, and there are some key things that I wanted to talk about at this conference and so I put the links up there and I worked off of, off of um, Open Scholar. So it worked really well for me and has worked really well for me and I've got my picture up there and you know and I can change it and edit it very easily. In fact, if you scroll, you'll see right here where it says admin. And if you click on admin, it lets you go in and you're, you're in the view where you're actually editing things. And I can edit very easily. So I just love the tool. I use it a lot. And I'm sure that some other faculty that are in the room here may want to add something because they've all been working with it as well. Um, Jim, do you want to say anything? or? Um, yeah, I found it very easy to use. Um, I'm, I might not be a good uh, a good example because I actually like to do HTML, but uh, <laughs> uh, and I actually sort of like Dreamweaver too. Um, and so I, I had one on the faculty uh, website, uh, but it, it was sort of a pain that you had to synchronize things back and forth. Some of them, uh, other servers like that, it's it's more seamless between your laptop uh, and the server. Now, I have to admit, for classes, I wasn't sure uh, what to, to put up. Rather, I, I think your idea of putting up a, a web page that actually describes it so you can get to it. So I thought, oh, what do I do? So I kind of copied and pasted some stuff from, uh, from Banner. And so if you click on the link, it just takes you to the Banner link, which is, uh, I, I just, I really, I didn't know what to do. Uh, because now, like on the faculty web, I had already sort of uploaded some pages that I already had, uh, and uh, yeah, I actually have a, a server that I have a link to. Uh, to oh, where did it go? My link's gone. Or is that a link? No, it's on my bio page. Okay, I need to fix that. Uh, yeah, that I was. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, I actually do a lot of, uh, of uh, DNA sequencing, and uh, this is a little server they let me uh, uh, set up for. You can look at the different sequences. <coughs> so uh, it's kind of it's nice to have uh, a place to, that's easy to to jump off from to find it. Uh, and so yeah, I think having some information out there for the students ahead of time is good. Uh, one thing that I spent a bit of time on was like the CV and publications. Uh, I'm I, I just hate uh, typing in publications and stuff. So I probably spent more time than I should have uh, on doing the importing uh, of them. You can, uh, it will export into to a number of different formats like bib text. And so I went around and found some uh, server that had a lot of my publications in it that had bib text format. And it worked pretty well. I had to kind of, like the title was duplicated or something like that. I had to do a little bit of cleaning up on it, but uh, I found that a lot easier to do. And a lot of the uh, publications now, of course, you, there's an online link uh, to your publication, and so I was able to sort of get that to work uh, as well, I think. So uh, having uh, done it lots of different ways, by far this was the easiest way to do, uh, and I think it's going to be something that's going to be easy for everyone to do. I think it's good. Anybody any questions about it? Yes. Yeah. It's out there. 
Yeah, and that's why I shut down. There's some things I'm working on that I don't want out, and so I just lock it up and have password protected. So it's like these might be intentional. Yep. That's where they would. Yep. But it will yeah. take some time for the Google search engine to build an index to find you. But as you put content in, it will find you. You said at the beginning if we wanted to build it, we'd need to. Yeah, just just email me, and I set up an account for you. The server automatically sends you an instruction on how to build your website. Use your temporary password, and you're on your way. So within a few clicks, you can have a shell with your mm -hmm. titles you want, and it's that easy. And that's that's advantage of this tool compared to what we had before, which was HTML, Dreamweaver, FTP. Even if you want to change a word, you have to FTP it back to override it. So that's not uh, last generation. That's it's old stuff. And and yeah. and some of the things that you can do here that you c cannot do with Dreamweaver unless you know Dreamweaver inside out. If you have like Twitter feeds, you can embed your Twitter feed inside your web page. If you want to subscribe, if you have uh, like RSS feeds, you can embed that. So there are a lot of things that you can do with one click that would have taken a lot of coding on Dreamweaver. So there's power to this way of doing things. And also it's very effective because you can change themes and palettes with one click. Are there any issues with, from a copyright standpoint of uploading uh, publications? Well, it is your website and it is hosted on the GC server. So we do have a disclaimer here. So it's your responsibility. This is your website. So what you put up there is is something that identifies what you want to do. So if it's open creative license, then, then, then there's no problem. Or if it's something that you've authored, then there's no problem. But if you link to some uh, page, then that's OK, too, because it's just a link. The admin is only available for the person who put up the page. Correct. Let yeah. me, uh, the admin yeah, mode. exactly, exactly. So for example, on this page, you won't see an admin page because this is a public viewer looking at Jim's page. Now, when Jim logs in, Jim will have all the controls he has, but you won't. Isn't there a problem with copyright issues? Or, you know, like I've got a couple book chapters, but I don't own the copy. Then you probably don't want to post it. Which I think is what Doug's question right. is, too. If you I've publish that journal, you can't, you can't re replicate that article. Right. 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 But you can always uh, say, say you can put the citation. You can yeah. put the citation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the citation. Yeah, the citation. Yeah.